let's uh all right so the next thing that i will take us to is plex uh and so i use plex to manage my uh all of my local media right and and so the the i think it's important to talk about two things with plex the first thing is price plex is free We'll dig into the details here, of course, but I want to make sure everybody knows Plex is free for the most part. They do have a Plex pass, which is either five bucks a month, 40 bucks a year, or currently 120 bucks for a lifetime uh, that adds some additional features. And I'll make sure to highlight which features those are. You can definitely get started for free. And that's how I recommend you get started. So what is Plex? Well, what Plex says is Plex brings together all the media that matters to you. Your personal collection will look beautiful alongside stellar streaming content. Enjoy live TV and DVR, a growing catalog of great web shows, news and podcasts. It's finally possible to enjoy all the media you love in a single app on any device, no matter where you are. I think that Plex buried the lead because the very last thing they say is the key. No matter where you are. That's the key to what makes Plex work, right? All your media, no matter where you are. Now, there's an asterisk there. It's all your non-DRM'd media. So if you've got DRM media inside your Netflix app, inside your Apple TV Plus app or whatever, or Apple TV app on Apple TV Plus, that doesn't work with Plex. It needs to be non-DRM media. You need to either rip it yourself or acquire it however you choose. Uh, so when you, when, and, I, and I will explain how to get Plex set up uh, a little bit later here because there's a couple different ways, but we talk so much about Plex on the show. I just wanted to go through what I do with Plex. So here's my home library. It is, um, you can see things that I've added uh, here. You can see things that I've added to movies and TV shows. You can also see different playlists that I've created. If we go to the movies list, you can see my entire movie library or if it's currently organized alphabetically, these are all stored on my Synology disk station, but you can install Plex on your Mac. You can install it even on a Raspberry Pi if you want, although be aware that the CPU that runs it will define whether the Plex server can do transcoding or not. And that's an important thing to test and check with. But if you've got a Raspberry Pi and you want to try it out, hey, nothing's stopping you and it might work out just fine. Uh, Plex allows me to just have my media anywhere I want, right? That's what we said, no matter where I am. And that's the key here. So you can see that I uh, was taking our TV shows from the TiVo and slurping them into Plex. I can't do that anymore because I don't use TiVo anymore, as I mentioned. But I have uh, TV series in Plex. Actually, I've got some that I ripped from DVDs uh, that we enjoy. And so I can watch my TV shows wherever I want. If there's a movie that I want to watch, I just go and tell it I want to play the movie. And then, you know, it and what's cool is when you pull your media into Plex, all the metadata that you're seeing here, the, the title, uh, the, well, the, the um, poster image, the description, the actors, the trailer, all of that stuff that is on Plex. They pull all of that stuff together when they pull when they see when it sees the movie file so you put the movie file in a folder that is your plex library uh you name it a certain way and it's pretty flexible with how you name it but i generally name it movie and then year in parentheses and then dot whatever the format is so usually dot mkv if i've ripped it from a dvd or dot mp4 if i want to convert it into that format or whatever and then from there plex looks and says ah okay i'm gonna check my databases pull in, figure out what movie it is, pull in all that metadata and then organize it for you. And that's it. And that's how it works. Then you can take these things and sync them to your uh, iPhone, iPad. Now Plex, like, like we were talking about with YouTube TV and Fubo, Plex has apps for all of your devices. So your iPhone, your iPad, your TVs, your Apple TV, Roku, right? All of that stuff. There are Plex apps available so you can just stream your content directly. Streaming content from your Plex server, either locally or remotely. So I go to an Airbnb. I launch the Plex app on their smart TV. I log into my Plex account and boom, now I have access to my library over there. It works just fine. That 
is all included in the free version of Plex. If you want to download content to sync to your device to watch offline, that requires a Plex Pass. If you want to use the Plex Amp app in your car to listen to your music that you can also store in your Plex library, that too requires a subscription. Uh, and I will pull up the music thing here so that we can all see it. Uh, but pulls in, you know, all of your stuff and, uh, and you know, again, pull, the metadata pulls it all together. They, like I said, they have an app called Plex Amp. You can play music. Uh, in your web browser and on the Plex apps on your uh, various devices, that's part of the free version. The Plex Amp app, which is a new CarPlay specific iOS app. Uh, they might have an Android and uh, Google Auto version of it, too. Uh, that requires a Plex Pass subscription. But again, uh, it's, you know, 40 bucks a year, five bucks a month or currently 120 bucks for a lifetime. It goes up when I bought my lifetime pass for Plex. It was 70. So if you. I, again, test it, use it for free. But when it's time to move, um, I would I recommend the lifetime thing. So that's Plex. Right. That, that's what I got. Uh, Can you at least explain? That's my spiel. So you talked about transcoding. Yes. Earlier. Um, why is that important? Good question. So your uh, you may choose to store your. Uh, content it, at super high quality, right? So if you rip it from a Blu-ray, you probably want to keep it at Blu-ray resolution, right? So you get this big 26 gig file or something for a, you know, whatever, two hour movie. Uh, and that's what you store on your Plex server. When you watch it on your TV, uh, whatever format that movie's in may or may not match what the app that you're running on your TV can display natively. Uh, it may or may not watch, match what your iPhone can display natively, uh, your Apple TV, your iPad. Apple's devices are notoriously restrictive in the formats that they can display. So Plex and the, the Plex server and the Plex app negotiate this when, the, uh, when you start playing something. And then they decide, can I send it natively? If I can, I will. Because that way the device gets all the data and it can display it the best that it can. If it can't, then it's up to the Plex server to transcode, to convert either the audio or the video or both into a format that's usable on that client device. And that is where transcoding comes into play. The other time transcoding comes into play is if you want to download to your iPad, for example. I don't need to download a full 4K movie onto my iPad. I can't see a difference, to be perfectly honest, on a little, you know, 11 inch screen. Some people may, and then you can choose to do that. But I, cho I choose to save things in what Plex calls medium quality on my iPad so that I don't fill the stupid thing up with movies uh, with only just a few movies. And so then it's up to the server to transcode it. And the faster the server can do that, the better off I am. Uh, obviously, if it needs to transcode it for real time playing, then it needs to be able to do that in real time. So, yeah.